Hello, and welcome to the CDGC custom metadata model. What we're going to be going over is when custom models are used. We're going to actually walk through the pulling of the model template. I'll walk through the model template, what uh, each step does, what they're used for, how to fill them out, and then we'll go over the upload and some common issues seen with it. The first thing to speak on is when these are actually used. The Metadata Command Center has a limited amount of scanners that we can actually use, and when you're looking to bring in metadata for something that we don't have a scanner for, we can create a custom scanner to run that. The first part of that custom scanner, though, is creating the actual metadata model. Now, how we're going to do that is we have to go to Customizations, and we have Custom Attributes here. We want to navigate to Metadata Models, and then download the template. When we download the template, we can choose model or metadata. Here, we'll choose model. And what this is going to give us is a sample that JSON file. I'll show that in a minute, but what we can also do is look through the existing metadata models and pull something that's close to it. If we were to pull, for instance, the SSIS model, we could navigate here, download, and it would give us the SSIS JSON file. When we actually look at the metadata model, this is how it will appear at first. This is the sample file where everything is given as a default uh, from the package name, classes, attributes, and more. Now, I do have an example shown up that has already been filled out, my custom resource example here. What we want to give is a package name. Uh, this can be uh, in my instance, I've chosen custom.resourceExample. You can also choose report dot whatever resource name you want to give, and then give a package label for it. The label and description aren't going to matter insofar as actually being able to upload, but we do want to give these as further details. We also want to specify the version as one, and we can move on from there. Now, Required packages, we don't have any that we necessarily need. For mine, I've created three classes for this resource example, a schema, a table, and a column. With these, I've given the name custom schema, and then I've labeled it as schema. The name is how we're going to reference it later in the table when we're looking at attributes and more. After giving the name, we want to give the super classes. I've given this data source and the core iClass feature, not necessarily going to be necessary, but the uh, data source is what we want to add. For a custom table, a data set, for custom column, a data element. Usually you're going to have more data elements than any other. These are just going to be to help establish a lineage. From our uh, custom resource, main resource, we're going to have a schema underneath that, a table underneath that, and a column making up the table. And that's how I've chosen to represent this. Now, moving further, we can look at the actual attributes that we want these to have. Uh, it's going to vary based on what you want to add in addition to the core elements, to the data set, data element, what have you. I've chosen to give a few examples, length, data type, data owner, as just a three simple examples. The length will give a name, the label can match the name, and then I'm giving this as core.string. Please note that, that this is case sensitive. You can also check against the attribute values that I've given here and make sure that yours are correct. Data type and data owner are going to follow this almost exactly. Next, we have associations. The associations are how we're going to actually relate these to each other. For this first uh, association, I'm giving schema to table. We want to have this be one line, and then we can give that the label of what it actually is, a schema to a table. The description can be blank, but we want to go uh, from class custom.resourceExample, this is the package name, to the actual name of the source object 
and then we're bringing it to the target object, custom.resourceExample.customTable. The to label and from label are going to be the labels of the objects that we're making the association for. The association kinds, this is a parent-child relationship, so we want to keep that preserved. And then you can see that I did the same thing here with a table to column, where I'm going from a custom table to a custom column with the same association type. You're going to have one less association than you do uh, association types, than you do have of these data elements, these classes. Now that we have association set, uh, the association kinds can be left blank, data types can be left blank, and then we can navigate to class attributes. For these class attributes, these are going to affect what we fill in later when we're making the custom scanner. The class name that I've chosen for here is that this is associated with the custom column. So the custom column is going to have our custom attribute length. It's given the package name for both of these. I've said is required to false because for my instance, I don't want this to be something that necessarily has to be filled out for the custom scanner to run as expected. I've done the same thing here where I've given the data element custom column as the class name and the attribute data type. And then here I've given the same attribute data owner for both the custom table and the custom schema, because I would want to so associate a custom data owner value to both of these larger sets of objects. I have, however, given the same other options is required, curatable, deprecated, etc. Finally, we're down to association attributes, kind attributes, class user keys, partition keys, association partition keys, and references all of which can be left blank. Note that all of these can be associated endless, can be customized endlessly, uh, where you can add as many data elements as you want, as many classes as fits your resource, and as many associations as there are uh, classes less one. The association uh, types are going to be absolutely necessary. The attributes and class attributes are not going to be necessary unless you want to add value beyond the core elements that are given by default. Once we've saved this JSON file, I can navigate back to the metadata command center. And now that I'm here, I'm going to go to new, customization, metadata model, and I'm going to create one. For this, I'll choose my file, custom resource, and I want to give the package name custom.resource example. I want it to match the file name and I can create from here. Once I hit create, I already have one that exists. I'm overwriting that, but the model was created successfully. Once we have this here, it's in the state of draft and we can publish. While this publish is in process, you might see certain errors when attempting to upload your own model. What you'll actually see is just a simple X um, with an error referenced. There's not much additional detail given there. What I would recommend is reaching out to Informatica GCS where we can review the file that you've implemented and then make corrections as necessary to draw the model into the metadata command center as necessary. From there, we can create the custom resource, which I'll leave for the next video. In summary, the custom metadata model can be pulled to generate any resource, but this must be filled out to the specifications that we've given, otherwise you'll run into errors. Further information can be found in the KB article, Custom Scanner for DBT Tool, which provides not only further information uh, and step-by-step -step instruction, but also an already filled out example to pull. We'd love to hear from you at either of these links. And thank you very much for your time.